Hello, it's Ollie here at The Crafty Whisk, and I'm so grateful that you could join me today. Hi everyone, I'm going to see how my voice goes. I'm still in recovery mode, but I really wanted to get um, this started. This is a new diamond painting that I got for Christmas from a new company that I have not bought from before. I generally only buy from the Diamond Art Company, um, or Diamond Art Club, because their quality of canvas and drills is um, really, really good. So this one comes from Dreamer Designs, and it is a dragon. I'm just trying to see if there's a picture on the box. Oh, yeah. there it is. It's on the bottom. My apologies. I don't know if I want to get that in. It's not going to focus, is it? There we go. That's the design there. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a comparison um, with what I know from the Diamond Art Club uh, quality to be like to this one. They are advertised um, almost identically. So it comes in a nice canvas carry bag by the look of it, which is very handy for when you have to pack work up in a hurry. I do like that. So I'll just keep that aside. It's done up with a nice ribbon as well. And Back of the canvas is really nice cloth, just like Diamond Art Club. And it looks like everything is wrapped up inside. I'm not going to get the whole canvas on the camera. It's quite big. I tend to work on big ones. Oh, there we go. It's a poured glue. The detail is incredible. As you can see, you've got a legend in the top right and the bottom left, which is handy. And it comes with a lifetime warranty. And the stick is, I would say, exactly like Diamond Art Club. Okay, so that's the canvas. Put that there, it's going to fall. <laughs> uh, what else do we get? We get a little tool kit in a pouch. Now, I haven't bought from Diamond Art Club in a while, so I'm not sure what their current kits are like. But so far, with Dreamer Designs, you get a really nice large tray. Oh, it has a um, little stopper in it too, so you can shake it around and they won't fall out. That's brilliant. Get a little plastic tipped applying pen and the battle tip get a, I think that would be either a, looks like a four spacer, a two spacer, get a little um, edge so you can go along and edge your line after line, little pencil grips, little wax that comes in little pots, it's quite cute. Now this is a square design so it does come with really nice fine pointed tweezers. This is, oh actually, oh yeah, that fits on there, so you can have two colours in there at the same time, if you wish. don't know if I'd do that, i just use multiple trays, personally. Uh, and you also get some little baggies to bag up any leftovers. So it's pretty much the same kind of kit. And we have the instructions, which looks, again, uh, Pretty much identical to Diamond Art Club. You could almost say they're the same company, although I know they're not. And you also get little um, stickers for all of the diamonds. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. That's nice there on stickers. The Diamond Art Club does that as well. And you also have a sticker of the actual image. I tend to photocopy this whole thing and put it in with my drill so I know at a glance which kit I'm actually doing because I tend to have multiple kits going at the same time because I get a little bit bored. Now the drills themselves, this is a square one and it looks like I've got some ABs in there which are the specialty drills. Sorry about the noise. These are packaged up exactly the same way 
again, this Diamond Art Club. And the ABs, here they are. I don't think I'm going to pick this up on camera very well. But they have like an iridescent shine to them. So I've got. How many pairs have I got? Ooh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, there's a lot. A lot of ABs. Okay. I like ABs in the painting. I don't like applying them. Um, they tend to... Um, they're a bit more tricky to apply. Oh, so that's the kit. Now, when I set up my kits, depending on how many drills in there, you know, I have got 66... That's a lot. So if I've only got a small amount of drills, I tend to use these sort of containers, which are really handy. It's a strip of four, and it just pops open like so. Easy enough to get the drills in and out of. And then you can also get them in the bigger ones. I just get these from AliExpress, to be honest, or Amazon. So they're the smaller kits. Now, for the bigger kits like this one, I tend to go and do this sort of a thing. It comes with all of this, so it comes with the bottles. I think this is a 60 set, so I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to do my six spare ones. I might have to use some of those. Uh, and these also come with a little funnel, a little tray, some wax, pen, and it also does come with some stickers. Now, to be honest, these stickers I don't use for diamond painting. I use these to label my ink pads. <laughs> these ones, I think this one's a bit old. I've had this one for quite a while, so they're not very sticky anymore. The look of it, that's okay. You can deal with that. So I'll take that out because I don't use that. I don't use the kit that comes. So what I do. Actually, bear with me, I'm going to go photocopy this really quick. Okay, so, sorry about that, I'm back. So the next thing I do is I go ahead and attach all these to the bottles. And then I go through the process of filling the bottles up. Now, if they don't come on pre-printed uh, stickers like this, because um, in the past they didn't, this is only relatively new in the last uh, couple of years, then I, um, when I do my photocopy, like here, I then just cut them out and just attach them with sticky tape. It's no big deal. So I'm just going to probably fast forward over this bit so you don't have to painstakingly watch me put stickers onto little bottles. Okay, and I'm back. Now, I've labelled all of my containers, and one thing I have noticed um, that Diamond Art Club does not do, these are all in numerical order. So it goes, so it counts up or down in the numbers. Whereas the Diamond Art Company, it's random. You've actually got to then sift through, find which one it belongs to. Now, I'm not sure what kind of drills these are. I know um, Diamond Art Company it's, uh, uh, corresponds with DMC colours. I'm not sure if these ones do or not. Um, I'll that bigger. What I do is I just cut a corner off of the bag and then I fill my container. I always do it over the top of a bigger container because trust me when you've dropped a whole bag of these on the floor uh, it's not fun. It's much easier to clean up if it's in a container. Now I knew with this one that it would be too many. So I've already marked one of the little baggies that they supplied with the number of the drill. By that I mean it's number 65, so it's AB798. So that's what I've written on the little bag. I'm just going to use the funnel to help me here. And I'm going to put the remainder of these in the little bag and then 
as I use up the ones from the container, I will then refill it from this bag. These little funnels are wonderful. Like so. So I'm just going to continue along doing this. I'll just have a couple on screen and then I will do the rest off screen. There's also a bag of the 65, so I'm putting those aside. We're up to number 64. They can get a bit sticky in the bag. If there's a lot of stickiness, you can cut up some dryer sheets and pop a little piece of dryer sheet in there and that removes the static. Okay, so that took a red hot minute, um, probably about an hour and a half. Um, that's all the spare drills in there. You can see some of them, um, there's multiple bags of the same colour. And of course, the ones I have multiple bags of are the dark colours. <laughs> Yay. Not my favourite thing to do. But some of them don't have many drills at all, as you can see. Now the one thing I did notice while I was kitting it up, there is a little bit of shrapnel with this brand. Uh, shrapnel is what I call um, drills that are misshapen or there's bits of extra plastic in there. There was a little bit more of that than what I'm used to, but it's not a, not a deal breaker at all. So the next thing I do to set myself up is I have my little bag of tricks here. I don't like using the plastic. Sorry, this is going to be annoying. Oh dear, there we go. A lot of people just peel back the plastic protective sheet and cut it off as they go. I actually don't prefer that. I tend to get myself all tangled up because you've seen my craft space, it's not very big. And unfortunately, this is one of those hobbies I can't take into the lounge room and do in front of the TV because all the animals, dogs included, like to jump on my lap unexpectedly. And that is not a good thing when you've got lots of these tiny little bits of plastic. So what I have is what they call release paper. I bought these um, a long time ago on Etsy. This is like way back when the pandemic started. Um, they just release papers. Now I know the Diamond Art Club does have them as well. I'm just trying to see if I've got any of these here. I think that's theirs there. Um, I've tried using the parchment paper trick. Here in Australia our parchment paper is not like the US parchment paper and I actually made a mess of one of my diamond paintings and it wouldn't lift off the glue at all. So hence I went to Etsy and bought these. So it's just like a plastic plasticky feel on one side and then the other side is quite papery. So the decorative side is what faces up and the plasticky side is what goes down. And I cut them into manageable segments like so. And then all I do is I peel back a portion of the plastic and I always work from top right to the bottom left. That's how I've always done my diamond painting. And I will just pop these release papers on top of the glue, making sure that I have the plasticky portion going down onto the glue. This way it protects your glue from dust and they're able to come back off so you can start working on that section. I do not do the whole painting, I just tend to do a couple of rows at a time. So I might just leave it at that for now. I've got smaller bits in case um, there's like a small segment, but this one didn't have any of that. Now you might have also noticed in my bag of tricks, I have all sorts of things. I've bought different pens along the way, which I like to use if I'm diamond painting for a long time. The thin pens, even with the little scrunchies on them, um, can hurt. So um, I've bought some just off Etsy. People hand make them out of resin and so on. 
I've got some waxes from the Diamond Art Club in here still. And I've also got some little multi places as well. And I've got another straight edge. Um, got some tweezers. Now, with one of these, this one here, it's really lovely actually. They came with a stainless steel single placer and a three placer on the other side. And this one, you can just um, take out that one and pop in another plastic one. But I'm going to see how their tools work. That's the whole point of this. I will put the little scrunchie on. Another thing is I'm not overly fond of the waxes that come with the kits. But in saying that, I do use the wax in the multi-places. In the single places, I use micro dots. And from memory, I've just emptied all my pens with all the old um, glue that was in there. I'm pretty sure it's either two or three of these. And I roll them up together. So let's try with three to start with. So you just pick them off. And it does need to be the micro ones. So I've just picked three off. Just going to roll it into a ball and I'm going to stick it into the end there. I think I might actually need four, but we'll see how we go. I find this leaves no residue on the drills at all. The wax tends to leave a residue, which isn't a big deal. Um, let me see, I might put one of the space, these ones on the other end. So this one I will use wax. I'm going to try their wax. Does it come out? Oh, very good, it does. It does have plastic on both sides of the wax. Don't try and go through the plastic because it's not going to work. Take off one side and then all you do is you just pop your pen straight down and slide off. And that gives you the amount of wax that you need in the end of your pen there. And the good thing about the wax is it is moldable. So you can just mold that back into shape pop that back in there. You do need to um, replenish your wax every now and again. It does get used up a little bit. So I'm just going to pop all of those bits and pieces into there. Now let me see if I've got enough light in here. I may need to use my light pad. Oh, one thing I didn't explain to you. You see on the legend here how there's symbols next to each of the colours. The symbols correspond with, let me get a bit where there's a lot of different symbols, here we go. Okay, you can see in that section there there's a lot of different symbols. Those symbols match up with these ones over here so you know what colour you need to put down. Now this canvas is a square drill and you can also get round drill canvases. Um, a lot of people don't like using the square ones because it it does take longer. They're a smaller drill but there is less gap in between the drills at the end so they do sit tighter together. For that reason sometimes people uh, think they're going crooked. What you really need to do is to pay attention where you're putting your drills down. They are boxed off so you do know that you need to put it within the box. You can't sort of go half on one square and half on the next. I'll see if I can zoom in a bit. Okay. Now, unfortunately, the section I'm going to be working on here is pretty much all one colour, which is blocking. So you could use um, a multi-placer to put down multiple ones at the same time, or you could work in checkerboard fashion where you put one down, miss the next one, put the next one, miss the next one, and go for the next one. In the next row, do the opposite, and then you can just fill in the gaps. That does mean that you'll get a straighter line, but it does take longer. All right, so let's start with a bit of color. I think we need a bit of color, not just the plain black. So I'm going to go with there's a little, uh, like a, a triangle sitting in the bottom corner. Looks like it's number four, number three, two, seven. 
So all we do is we tip out a few of these into our tray. I'm not going to do very many. Put it back in there so that they don't spill. And then we just shake it a little bit. And you'll notice the drills will fall into the little grooves. And you can just sort of pat them down. And then you end up with a little line of drills so that you can pick up a few at the same time if you wanted to. So I'm just going to do one by one. And you can go as fast or as slow as you want. This is meant to be a relaxing hobby. It is not meant to be a speedway. And the more accurate you are, the better the result in the end. And as soon as your pen loses a bit of sticky, there's when you need to put some more wax in there. Now, I don't have that issue using the glue dots. I can go and do several diamond paintings before I need to change my glue dot. But these pairs are a little bit deeper than the other ones, so I do need to use four. So I'm just going to grab another one. I'm going to pull out the glue dots that are in there. And I find if they do lose a bit of stick um, in the drier months, all you do is you pull it out and then you roll it back up and you put it back in. The glue dots just go forever. All right. Pack that back into there. Like so. All right. And this is basically all there is to it. Now you can go fancy and use a light board. That one I'll put down crooked because I'm not used to working at this angle. I'm used to sitting right, right over it. So you can either use the pens or you can use tweezers. Tweezers, I find they flick everywhere on me. Not very good with using the tweezers, but they are good for just shimmying them into place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull these back into here. Oops, a daisy, I'm not used to using this tray. And it's quite handy with that little paw spout thing. Alright. So you do need to be mindful when you're working on your diamond painting that you don't rest on the glue because you will, it will lose a bit of tack. What I might quickly do is show you how to do the multi-placer. So that is with the, the black ones. Now I've only filled up this three one. I haven't filled up any of the bigger ones. So you just shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Yeah, to practice with this, it's been a little while since I've done it. Okay, so once this sort of shimmied around, I tend to make sure that you've got a nice grouping and they're straight. You can either do it vertically, like it's really hard to see in this light, or you can go horizontally. If they need fixing, which I know these ones do because I'm not sitting over the top of it so I can't see what I'm doing. Fix it up a little bit, like so. Nice and easy. Now, what I might quickly do is set up my light pad so I can show you what it looks like with a light pad under it. So, just bear with me for one minute. Okay, so I have my light pad all set up here. These are super cheap, you can get them anywhere these days. Very, very thin, just plugs in with the USB and switches on to whatever light dimness you want. And then what I've done with my canvas is I've rolled it up and then just popped a little clip so it's not hanging around everywhere. And then with a bigger clip I tend to just clip it onto the light board just so it doesn't fall. And then I'm ready to go. And you can see with the light, um, it's easier to see the symbols in the dark. And then I've just got it on a, a little easel. Let me see if I can show you that. We 
which I pad out. So it's just a little fold up easel, cheap as chips. And that puts it at a nice angle for me to be able to work on. And then once you have um, finished for the session, I just grab the release paper. Not much room here. Okay. Grab the release paper that I took off. And it doesn't matter how much you've done in here, as long as there is something to stick to, you just put the release paper back on. If you finish the whole section, you don't need to use the release paper anymore. And then I just bring the plastic back up and clip it all closed and ready for the next session next time. I hope that was helpful for you and I will do little um, impromptu videos with how I'm getting on with this particular one as well. Thanks guys. Please like and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss it when I bring out a new video.